You're listening to The Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas of the Lotri Foundation. In this podcast, Sheikh Zahir explains the aphorisms from Ibn Atal Allah's famous book of wisdoms, Al-Hikam al ataiyah a classical manual of spiritual development. Visit SecretsHub.org for online courses, our reliable answer service, and engaging media. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما بفضلك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم so we're on number 28 of the hikam of ta'ala rahmat alayhi so he says ما مستودع في غيب السرائر ظهر في شهادة الظواهر الظواهر so he says what is reposited in the innermost hearts what is uh, placed or hidden uh, in the innermost heart, hearts uh, appears in the testimony of the outward works <coughs> so uh, Ibn Ta'ilah rahmatanayhi mastawdi'a fi ghayb al-sara'ir is what is placed in the heart and what is placed in the heart <coughs> is placed there uh, in order to preserve it or to protect it mm. <coughs> and so here in the uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can place uh, the things in one heart or one can allow things to come into uh, one's heart sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he places in the heart of the servant he places uh, he, he may place in the heart uh, he may place modesty or humbleness or he may place fear in the heart of the servant. And so when that happens, when he places these types of traits in the heart, humility, honesty, uh, truthfulness, these are all traits, <coughs> traits of the heart. When he places it in the heart, they become manifested on the limbs. Whatever is in someone's heart, comes out whether you like it or you don't like it it will always seep out as some of the ulama say whatever is in the heart will always seep out to the limbs <coughs> <coughs> and it may even become apparent on the tongues what is in the heart so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he places these traits especially these traits that are virtues their virtues and their good in themselves. It comes out on the heart and they may appear, it comes out on the limbs and it may appear uh, in various forms. It may appear in terms of works of goodness. It may appear in terms of adab, in terms of etiquette. It may appear in good character that the person possesses. And it may appear in, in, in silence. Over, over difficulties so it appears in that however the heart can also be filled and can take on things that are evil shudderan it can take on evil or traits that are uh, traits that are demeaning or traits that are uh, in contradiction to ones that can contradict one's belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in, or help to uh, to cause one to sin or lead one to sin things like shirk uh, the heart can be posited with uh, with thinking or depending on others uh, or pl- placing others in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or nifaq the heart can be filled or have within it hypocrisy showing one thing and believing something else or showing one thing to some and something else to others 
or kibbutz or arrogance, uh, pride, sorry. It, uh, the, the heart could have pride or it can have hasid, envy, wanting a blessing that, uh, <clears throat> wanting a blessing that has, uh, that others have to be taken away from them. Hmm? Having a blessing that someone has to be taken away, these types of things. And so when they are manifested, these traits that are within the heart, when they are manifested on the, on the limbs, it may come into the form of, uh, of sinful things. And they may come in the, from, in the form of, of dalala, of uh, wrongfulness or wrongdoing or corruption. It may lead the, the limbs to do things <coughs> that are very corruptive that are very uh, bad. And so what one has to do, as Ibn Ta'ala is, is what he's getting at, at, is that if one wants one's actions to be sound, one has to concentrate on the heart. If one wants one's actions to be sound, one words to be sound, one has to concentrate on exactly what is in the heart. One has to concentrate on what fills the heart. And if one sees that uh, off the limbs there is uh, evil or there's sin, one has to go back to the heart to, uh, to determine what exactly is in the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet والسلام, he mentioned this in the hadith that he says in the in the body is a piece of flesh. If it is sound, if the if this piece of flesh is sound, meaning it's pure, it's sound, then the rest of the body is also sound. But however, if it is corrupted, if it is if it is corrupted, corrupted an elm sound then the rest of the body becomes likewise also, meaning it's, it corrupts the rest of the limbs. And he said this, is, uh, this piece of flesh is the heart. This is the piece of flesh is the heart. So we know <coughs> that uh, outwardness uh, is a reflection of the inward. Outwardness is a reflection of the inward. Although people can fake what is outward, uh, and this is, uh, and not display what is on the inward. This is nifaq. I mean, it's hypocrisy. <clears throat> they can fake it. Or you can fake, at the other end of the spectrum, you can fake being good in order to become good. You can. You can force yourself to, you can force yourself, even though it may not be a trait of the heart, you can force yourself to do good. You can force yourself to speak good. You can force yourself to have patience by telling yourself until what happens, until, it, until the, the pressures of the shaitan bows away or taken away, and then the heart builds on what you're forcing the limbs to do. The heart bows, the shaitan leaves, and the, and the heart picks up... <clears throat> what the limbs are doing uh, and you force yourself uh, to act in, in because you know what is right and so that is control but it's still working on the heart how do we work on our heart we work on our heart through the discipline of <clears throat> through the discipline of <clears throat> we work on the heart through the discipline of of the of our limbs to the discipline of our limbs you can also work on the hearts, you know, in the... You uh, can also work on the heart by being around the people who are good also. We can work on our hearts by being or showing the heart uh, what goodness looks like and what goodness is feels like. We can work on the hearts by having good companionship and being with people who are sound and being with people who remind us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hmm. We can be like them. He says it was asked by the messenger, it was asked, uh, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa was asked concerning 
سوء إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن الله تعالى The Prophet ﷺ was asked about the who are the intimate friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are they and he says الَّذِينِ إِذَا رَعُوا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ He says they are the ones if they're seen when they're seen they remind you of Allah you re- they remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the remembrance of Allah dawns in the person and because why because the uh, the soundness of their uh, of their hearts is manifested on their faces the soundness of their hearts are manifested <coughs> on their faces and so the soundness and so the weakness of someone's heart is also manifested on people's faces and limbs the face is a limb the face is a limb also so the the people whose hearts are sound Obviously, it's the manifestation of actions is on their heart, but you can also see it on their face. You can also see it on their face. And so, like the opposite is true too. If someone is unsound in their hearts, it's also seen on their limbs, and it's also seen on their faces. It's seen on their faces. And so, or our face, uh, uh, what we... Um, the the law here, the the outwards, the outward manifestation of things is just a dalil, is just a proof uh, of what is in the inward. Mm, it's, it's it's a sign of what is in the inward, and so one has to work on it. One has to work <coughs> on <coughs> on doing actions that uh, uh, doing actions that protect the heart doing actions that protect the heart and being around people that uh, that lead to the protection of the of the heart because if you're around uh, and you if you are around people that commit sins on the outward or commit sins <coughs> on the limbs <coughs> commit sins on the tongue then over time they're going to wear on you and you're going to start to do it also or the worst thing that can happen is that you consider to be a norm. You consider to be a norm. If you're around people who speak bad about others and, are, and have racism or intolerance, you also will become affected by it. And you will, be, and you will think that it's acceptable. You will believe that it's acceptable because you hear it. Whatever you hear constantly, or whatever you see consistently and constantly, it weakens the heart or it can strengthen it. It either weakens it if it's evil, it weakens the heart. In what? In terms of the connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it strengthens the heart, what you see of in others and actions and what you hear can strengthen the heart in closeness to Allah if the things that you hear consistently and see consistently are things that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the things that you hear consistently and you see consistently strengthens are, are things that lead you to, to thinking good of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then those things will lead to a strengthening of the heart. Those things can lead to a strengthening of the heart. So one always has to be uh, cautious one has to be cautious of what one sees and what one hears. One has to be cautious of it because it will impact you. It will leave a definite impact, especially if it's consistent. If it is consistent, it will leave an impact. And this is the, you know, they call it different names. You know, it's peer pressure. They call it whatever. But this is talked about by our Messenger وسلم, in the hadith I quoted, and it's talked about in the Quran. It's talked about in the Quran, and it's talked about in the Quran by the verse, uh, by many verses, but one verse in particular, in the good way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah bi dhikr Allahi tatma'innul kulub. Is it not by the by the remembrance of Allah that bring the hearts to tranquility? 
<clears throat> meaning that it brings the heart to soundness, tranquility. It, the remembrance of Allah brings the heart to tranquility, to soundness. The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one's mind, in one's tongue, standing, sitting, lying down, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on the tongue, in terms of actions, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in terms of the actions that you do, in terms of the actions that you see, there, that's all in the remembrance of, because you may see an action that reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's the remembrance. And you may do an action that reminds you of Allah, and that's remembrance. And you may hear, you may say something that reminds you, and it's a remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you may hear something that, that causes you to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of that is dhikr, is remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it happens consistently, it changes the person. Because more tranquility of the heart and more pureness of the heart, and the heart becomes sound. The opposite then remains true. The opposite will remain true. The opposite will remain true. If you're around people who have anxiety and they're consistently have anxiety, the anxiety will pass to you or the fear will pass to you. That happens and that's the transfer of states between people to people. That's what happens. States are transferred between people to people. And so soundness of the heart, we have to work on it ourselves, but we have to work on it not just in terms of, of what we do in our actions, but we also have to work on it about those that we, or the things that we allow our eyes to see, and we allow our ears to hear, and we allow our, you know, ourselves to be around. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> make our hearts sound, mm. forgive us and have mercy upon us, forgive our elders. Mm. <clears throat> and our parents give them good health and long life. Those who are sick, may Allah SWT heal them and cure them and grant them shifa tam and wadawam. And those who have passed away, may Allah SWT grant them his mercy and his makfir and his shade. And that day when there is no shade except his, may Allah SWT help and guide and forgive and protect all those who are our brothers and our sisters faced with difficulty. May Allah wa ta'ala save us and save the Ummah of the Messenger وسلم, from the fitna of this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us and forgive us, have mercy upon us, make our homes amongst the homes of the believers, and make our last words our best words. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, sharu wa ila ila ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk wa sallallahu ala sayyidah Muhammadin wa ala adihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Thank you for listening to the Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas. Help Seekers Hub spread the light of guidance to millions around the world by supporting us through monthly donations by going to seekershub.org slash donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and Canada.